land it safely, drive it around, look at some rocks up close, and actually operate it from millions of miles away. The Soviets, by the way, operated several rovers on the surface of the moon in the early 1970s. So that was kind of the early inspiration uh, for putting a rover on the red planet. But operating a rover on a planet that's like many light minutes away, instead of the moon about one and a half life sec seconds away, much bigger challenge. Uh, so this is just another uh, 3D effect here. I assume you're getting a pretty good 3D effect, even wow. though the, uh, the uh, it's more uh, pink rather than red. But this, these rocks here, this, this really, you know, the pattern of the rocks, this is just like a flood on Earth. These rocks were carried along by the flood and left behind as the flood waters evaporated or drained away. Uh, so on the seventh, or actually it was the first day of the mission, Sojourner rolled off the platform onto Martian soil. Now this is a different mission than the rover, the current rovers. Spirit and Opportunity, the lander is non-functional. It basically it lands and then it dot, like there's no further operation from the lander. It's passive. In this mission, both the lander and the rover took data, took pictures of each other, communicated with each other, and both of them did scientific investigation. So this is a different, a different kind of mission. The very first rock that Sojourner analyzed up close was this rock here called Barnacleville. And here we see a close to true color 3D picture of Barnacle Bill up close, which turned out all the rocks here are basically volcanic rocks, but volcanic rocks that were transported by liquid water during a flood. Uh, this is a super high resolution picture of one of the bigger rocks at the site called Yogi, after, hopefully after Yogi Berra, not Yogi Berra. <laughs> Uh, this one's called Ender. I don't know if it's after the science fiction Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. I'm not sure where the name came from. This one's probably after that uh, cartoon character Gromit. These rocks, by the way, are all basically uh, you know, volcanic rocks, basalt, similar to volcanic rocks on Earth. And this one's called Shark. I guess they thought it looked kind of like a shark fin. And Wedge, I guess I can understand where that name comes from. And this is that crater now. I want to move on and talk about Mars Global Surveyor. Uh, this is the crater that I showed you the rim of a few minutes ago, seen from orbit. Now Mars Global Surveyor entered Mars orbit around the same time that Pathfinder landed in 1997. And Mars Global Surveyor lasted for about 10 years, and only about a year ago that they lost contact and the mission came to an end. Probably more than any other mission, Mars Global Surveyor really revolutionized our understanding of Mars. Uh, I'm just going to show you some really spectacular pictures from the spacecraft. Uh, so these are, these are all pictures looking down, taken from orbit. But, uh, for example, a Mars Global Surveyor found evidence of current <coughs> small-scale water flow on Mars. It found evidence of like a, an ancient uh, global magnetic field. Uh, just really mapped out a lot of where the mineralogy, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, it showed this area, Meridiani Planum, where there used to be liquid water. I'm not sure, the caption didn't give the name of this crater. This one's really cool. This is called Monument Valley, probably because it's somewhat similar to Monument Valley in Arizona. But what happens is the orbiters, this one's really cool, these sand dunes in the North Polar region. The way it works is the orbiters do most of the science. The rovers and the landers get all the, the media hype and headlines. Uh, from a scientific perspective, the Mars uh, Pathfinder and Sojourner had a relatively modest return of science. Uh, it was more of a proof of concept to pave the way for future rovers. Its Mars Global Surveyor, from a scientific standpoint, contributed significantly more to our understanding of Mars. So I think there's just one or two more pictures here from orbit. Okay, this is really cool. NASA has another orbiter that's still working called Mars Odyssey. Mars Global Surveyor actually took a, a picture of Mars Odyssey in orbit 
this isn't like maybe the, the coolest 3D picture, but it's really cool to see an actual spacecraft in orbit around Mars. Hmm. There's actually another orbiter also functioning from NASA called mm -hmm. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. And then there's also a European orbiter called Mars Express. So right now, let's see, there's, there's five, five current spacecraft functioning on Mars or in orbit. Pretty amazing. Okay, now this is the region called the, the Columbia Hills where Spirit is currently located. Spirit actually climbed to the top of the Husband, uh, Husband Hill. I'll show you some pictures from the summit, then climbed down on the opposite side. So Spirit's actually down in here somewhere. It's actually off the picture now. But Spirit landed on the left, climbed to the top, I think the summit's right here, and then climbed to the bottom. An absolutely incredible achievement, considering that the rovers really were not designed to climb mountains. Okay, so I want to get, go now to the Mars Exploration Rovers, the Mayor mission. Uh, the first one, of course, landed was Spirit, landed on very late at night on January 3rd, 2004. And it left at this landing platform 12 Mars days later, later on January 15th. Remember that a day on Mars is a little bit longer than a day on Earth. So this is the view from orbit. Um, I'm sorry, this is uh, the view taken by uh, the, the descent camera as it was descending to the surface. And you can see here where some of the bounce, bounce marks uh, are. Oh, I'm sorry, this had to have been taken by Mars Global Surveyor because we see the bounce marks. So it would have been after it landed. You can see here where the heat shield hit the surface uh, near Bonneville Crater. And here we can see where the parachute and back shell landed. And the, the rover and lander landed right here. Okay, so on the fifth day, NASA released the first panorama from the pan cam of this landing area in Gusev Crater that I talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, the camera itself is about one megapixel, and as I mentioned, it gives you approximately 2020 equivalent vision. Uh, now, the, the stereo here. There's a lot of pictures you can find on the web that has fake stereo, like all Hubble pictures of like the Eagle Nebula. They're cool 3D pictures, but it's fake stereo. This is real because remember on the pan cam, you have two lenses at the top. So you, it's just like our eyes where you get that parallax effect. It's real 3D. You're seeing real 3D from pictures shot through the different lenses and combined on a computer to create the 3D effect. And I want to make it clear, these pictures are really cool. There's a, there's a bug on Mars right now. Um, there, there's a, there's life on <laughs> yeah, I just oh, killed yeah. life on Mars. Dream on, dream so on. So what's cool too about these pictures, they definitely have the G-Wiz effect. But these 3D pictures are not just G-Wiz. The scientists use them because it helps them deduce distances and sizes of rocks and, and other features. And also they can be used to help safe navigation so the scientists who are steering these rovers can avoid hazards like rocks. Okay, so this was taken by the rear hazard avoidance camera of the landing platform very shortly after it left the landing platform. And if you're curious about how big these wheels are, they're about 10 inches across. And this now was taken a few days later when the rover had rolled up to its first rock that it was going to examine up close with its, this robotic arm. This rock is called Adirondack, obviously after the mountain chain in upstate New York. This rock, by the way, turned out to be volcanic. Uh, it, what it did is the rock abrasion tool carved a little hole in it, uh, you know, just grinded a little a circular hole. And this is a picture taken by, oh, I'm sorry, this is actually dust grains before it got to, uh, before they ratted um, Adirondack. I think I have a picture. Yeah, this is Adirondack now. After it had been ratted uh, by, this, uh, by the rat instrument, this picture then is taken by the...